And we are live on the Metabolic Motivation Show and very excited to be with uh, Greg Carver today, who is a uh, fitness expert and long, long-time uh, health and fitness professional in, Can- in Canada. So, Greg, uh, right. welcome. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Dan. How, can you tell us, uh, how did you get started uh, in, uh, in fitness? Has this been a lifelong thing or did you have a transitional moment? Oh, I had a transitional moment. It was not a lifelong thing. It's actually, you know, when you describe me as a, a, a lifelong proponent, um, it's probably the opposite, you know, because I had a lot of health challenges uh, growing up and as, a, as, you know, even in my early adult years that I had to overcome. But it was kind of going through that adversity that led me uh, to this discovery of uh, what you can control in your own environment in terms of movement and nutrition can really change your life. Uh, But I was by no means a a fit individual as a young adult and certainly not as a kid. Oh, that's, you know, sometimes (laughs) it's even, that's even, um, even better for a lot of our viewers who maybe have, uh, you know, sometimes have, have never really been into health and fitness, but would like to get started. And sure. uh, maybe you could tell us, uh, share your, if you would, you know, uh, the brief, a short version of your story. Well, okay, the short version of my story, yeah. I mean, basically, I think I just got a, a genetically poor deck to begin with. And that's one of the things that this taught me is, is that, you know, you, you can start with your genetics, but then you can overcome a lot through lifestyle changes. Yes. And uh, so, you know, as a kid, I was, I was, I was just sick a lot. You know, I had uh, all these problems. I was never an athletic kid. I never felt like I was, uh, you know, the one that would play all the sports and stuff like that. Um, and even as a, as a, uh, when I was probably around, I don't know, late teens, early twenties, I started developing all these problems. Like I had, I had uh, three spontaneous lung collapses just Ooh. out of the blue, not all at once, uh, but those really knocked me for a loop. You know, for months at a time. You know, you go through the chest tubes, and I had. Uh, two pleurectomies, one on each side, where basically they staple up the weak spots in your lungs and they stick them to the the, the lung, to the lining of the chest cavity. Right. And, uh, you know, you go through something like that and it, uh, it, it knocks you for a loop. I had... Um, I would have had two brothers, but they didn't even make it past being infants because of lung problems. So, wow. you know, there's a lot going on. Um, I remember being hospitalized for, for um, you know, for everything from anemia to, to pneumonia to all these different things that just seemed to sit me. And then by the time, you know, I, I kind of got out of that. Like by the time I hit my, my 30s, I, st- I started realizing that maybe fitness and health has something to do with this. So I started to make a change. The problem was, and I think a lot of your viewers can identify this, especially if they're in the same kind of age group, is that the information that we had available to us back then is very different from what's coming out now. Yes. So I was doing this, you know, oh, really low fat diet and I'm going to run and I'm going to, you know, eat lots of complex carbs and all this kind of stuff right. because that's, that's, that's what everyone was doing. Sure. And, and you know what, Dan, it actually worked for a bit because it's, be, you know, it's better than where I was. So I did get benefit out of it. But in the long term, that led to even more problems. Yes. So my God, by the, by the time I got in my 40s, I started developing chronic inflammation. Yes. But I didn't know I had chronic inflammation. I just know that I was tired all the time. I know that my joints ached. Um, I wasn't, you know, I would get out of bed and I'd feel like I was 90 years old. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And so, you know, they were trying to diagnose me with um, everything from lupus to fibromyalgia. Um, and finally, I said, you know what, I, I've had it. Like, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't take any more ibuprofen. I, I have to find a solution. So I went to see this guy. Um, and maybe you know him. His name is uh, Bryce Wild, and he's now he's on Doctor Oz a lot now, so he's right. kind of become I, famous. I know but of him. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. Him. I went to see him, and he said, "Greg, your problem is in your gut." And I said, "No, it's not. My problem is in my my knees hurt, and my you know I feel tired. My problem's not." And he said, "No, it's in your gut. That's where we're going to start. It's inflammation." Right. So you, you were know, dealing with I, the symptoms of the inflammation. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. So I, I got to tell you, just to wrap this up, you know, he put me on like I had a good probiotic. He put me on fish oil, changed my diet. And I already thought I was eating pretty well because most people, if you ask them, they say, yeah, I eat pretty well. Sure. Uh, but he put me on a pretty good anti-inflammatory diet. And you know what? Within 30 days, every symptom just disappeared. 
Like I felt like a new person. Wow, and then it was you. this, oh my gosh, I have this passion now. I have to tell people uh, because I see the power of food and then later movement and exercise and fitness and what it can do for you is just absolutely amazing. Yes, yes. The human body is amazing when you treat it the right way. But, uh, right. but you're, you're so correct. Um, and I've, you know, have seen so many people that we've been oftentimes given the incorrect information. And uh, as you were saying, you know, many times when you go from eating just a really poor processed food diet and you go to a cleaner uh, diet that's low fat, high carb, people mostly do feel a little better initially, but then they start sure. getting the inflammation and, and nutrient deficiencies, uh, especially with the omega threes and uh, the lack of fat soluble vitamins. Did you right. uh, deal with, uh, did you also notice any of that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I really increased my omega threes and the, you know, he, the supplements he put me on, which I'm no longer on, but you know, in the beginning he said, Greg, you need these sort of therapeutic doses. I originally kind of resisted sure. because I said, you know, I, I don't want to do this supplement thing. And I looked at the, I mean, he wasn't selling them, but the, the, the cost of this was quite high. And I yes. thought, my God. And then I told myself, Greg, if you don't do what this guy says, why are you bothering to see him? You should do what he says to the letter. And so that's what I did, and wow, what a difference. Oh, well, good for you. Good for you. So, so that led you then to, um, into the, to making this uh, actually a profession for yourself? I did because I was a corporate guy. I worked for a big telecommunications firm for many years. I was a director there, and, uh, and I just decided, boy, I, I need a real change in my life, and I want to share this with people. And, and it, it when I was, I was actually laid off from the firm and that was, boy, the day I drove home, I had the biggest smile on my face, Dan, like you can't even imagine because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Right. And so I, I created a facility in Toronto called the Strength Box and I wanted to, because I was into fitness and stuff like that, and I wanted to share my passion for moving naturally, primal movement patterns, all that kind of stuff, strength training, mobility, and be able to, to coach people. So I could kind of bring my loves together of, of fitness and health and also coaching people. And so that's kind of how the Strength Box in Toronto was created. Wow, fantastic. Congratulations on that. So it Thank sounds you. like you're you know, getting laid off. Um, is actually a lib could be a liberation. Oh, it was life changing. It was <laughs> at, it was just the best thing that could ever. You to know me. that could be a that could be a product right there. Make your layoff in, into liberation and life and a life change or life changing liberation. We could play with the L's that and you could be absolutely the, you could be the poster a liberation. Child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's one of those things you kind of dread when it, when it happens because, or, or you dread it happening because people get, you know, sucked into the kind of, oh, I, the, the security of the corporate job and all, which is anything but secure. Um, and, and, you know, we worry about saving for retirement and all these kind of things. And now my, my priorities have just shifted so much. Um, you know, it makes me think that people, people put so much energy and effort into planning for the retirement, but only from a financial perspective. So they'll hire a financial advisor, they'll talk to their banker, they'll do the RSPs, and they, they, they save up all this money, and they work themselves to death doing yes. it. And then the retirement comes, and if they can even take it, because I read an article yesterday on how a lot of people can't retire because of health reasons. <laughs> so if you can even take the retirement, it often doesn't end up being what you thought it was going to be. A, people don't have passions outside of their job because they focused everything in their life into their job, so they don't know what the heck to do with themselves. And then B, they work themselves up into a state of disrepair and poor health that the money that they saved up ends up paying for, you know, the, the drugs and the doctor bills and everything just to make them healthy again. Yes, so true. So true. It's yeah, kind of sad. Know, I think you really just hit the nail on the head. There's, I see that so much myself. You know, we, we're so, it's sort of like the, pro, the, the programming that, we're, uh, that many of us were given, you know, that we're supposed yeah. to. Uh, there's, well, there's, and I would, I would, this would, uh, I would give, I like to give credit when I can remember who I get ideas <laughs> from. Uh, there is a, a New York uh, writer and entrepreneur whose name was um, Al, James Altucher, 
or Al mm -hmm. Tucher, Al Tucher. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but I'm he, not, has no. a, he has a very interesting um, book called Choose Yourself. And he talks, he really touches on this topic uh, and touches on it well, how, you know, in the past, you know, it was true that the whole corporate jobs, people did live their whole life with the corporate job. I mean, maybe our, maybe your grandparents or your, you know, or, or my grandparents uh, or, you know, parents, but our generation, we still have the, like the remnants of that programming, that mental thing as part of our belief system, but that's right. gone, you know, and, and we right. still have this retirement idea and we give up our health to get wealth, we think. And then we give up our wealth to uh, to try to regain, regain the, health. the health. Absolutely. <laughs> and it shouldn't be such a linear process. You know, it seems like life, it's okay, first it's school, and then it's work, and then it's retirement. And I never quite understood that. I, I never understood why why can't you just mix it all together? Why can't I why can't I learn right now? And whether it's going to school or studying something, why can't I have playtime now and active time now and also work now why can't why does it have to be these sort of three blocks or three stages never really made sense to me right. um, so now I'm just I'm, I'm poor and happy and that's a hell of a lot better <laughs> you know having the money and the security and just being stressed out all the time it just doesn't make sure. any sense yeah quality of life I mean you're absolutely totally absolutely well, well, Greg, tell me. Let's uh, let's talk a bit about if we could change gears about yep. um, you know your the typical people. Uh, let, maybe we we mentioned a little bit in our emails the forty plus crowd. Uh, right. That I know you deal a lot of a lot with. What are some I do. of the what would be the top three uh, issues or problems or frustrations you see with the forty plus crowd, and and then how do you deal with those? Well, first of all, um, I think one of the biggest issues is just loss of mobility um, in that crowd because people forget to work on the mobility and mobility isn't necessarily a sexy thing. You know, it's not sure. something that if you're doing that, you tend not to Instagram it or put it on Facebook, right. like all of the, the crazy workout stuff. Um, you know, frankly, sometimes it can be a little boring, but you got to you got to put in the work. Um, it was Steve Maxwell, who is one of my mentors. He's a, a coach who's, I think Steve is 61 or 62, an amazing guy. And uh, he always says that, Greg, mobility, it, it's truly the keys to the fountain of youth. Yes. It, it's like there is nothing more. It, he says, um, one of his quotes was, he's, he's, you know, he meets a lot of old people and he said, I, I'll, I'll peep, see people who are 70 and 80 years old and they never say, gee, I wish I could had a bench press more or gee, I wish I'd logged more hours on the elliptical machine. Yes. But they will say, gee, I wish I worked on my mobility because I see it all the time. I see people come into my facility, into the strength box and they can't squat. Like a basic body weight squat just seems they, they don't even know what to do because we spend all our lives sitting down in chairs and we have computers and couches and, you know, cars and ev everything that begins with C. There's more alliteration for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so computers, we never. Cars and couches. I like that. Yeah. Chairs. Yeah. Chesterfields, if you're English. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we never get below parallel. You know, I mean, it's getting ridiculous. Even the, you know, I went into a, a plumbing supply st uh, store or, um, you know, store, store where they sell uh, bathroom fixtures and they were trying to sell me a comfort height toilet seat because it's all the rage now because they're higher. Oh, so you don't right. have to squat as low. Okay, wow. that, that's ridiculous. Yes. It's ridiculous. So people can't squat. That's basic human movement. It's basic human capacity. Sure. Have to be able to do it. I realized that, late, I mean, God, I'm going to be 56 years old this year. I'm no spring chicken. So I have, like, my squat's gotten way, way better, but I have my mo own mobility challenges. I have poor thoracic mobility in the upper back. I have poor shoulder mobility. And for various reasons, I think, you know, a lot of it has to do, uh, you know, congenitally and with the issues that I went through. But boy, I, I may not be a star at that mobility, but I make it a priority to spend every day working on it a little bit. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It's just like, it's just learning to, to, to first of all, some joint mobility, what you have to do. And I don't care if it's five minutes, just, you know, in the morning, it's a great thing to do. Right. Oh, yeah. But so that's, that's one of the things that I would say mobility. The other thing is, as you get older, people got to get comfortable with getting on the floor again. You know, it seems like we spend all our lives, as I said, on these chairs or standing up. And you don't see, like, if you look at older people, little kids are on the floor all the time. We're never on the floor. So learning some kind of ground engagement, 
I did a whole program recently on just getting up and down off the floor, why it can save your life, why it's so important. And I look at people, Dan, who are only in their 40s, and I'll say, ask them to get on the floor and get up again. And I look at the way that they get up, and it's a struggle. Right. And I think, wow, fast forward 20 years, fast forward 30 years, because that's going to happen. And what are they going to be? What are they going to be like? That's important to work on that simple stuff. It's not sexy. But it again, it's the key to the fountain of youth. Yes, wow, so uh, so powerful stuff, very powerful stuff, and uh, very very true. Um, well, Greg, t- what about uh, what about nutrition for someone who a be- you know a, a beginner that comes to you, a forty something yep. person who comes in, they're eating the standard you know the standard you know American slash world processed food diet. <laughs> uh, because yeah. I, I'm assuming in Canada, you guys are. Are, uh, are not free of the corporate um, advertising influence of corporate food. No, no. We fare a little better, like honestly, in terms of the food supply than the U.S., but, uh, but still like the, yeah, the multinationals and the advertising that you're exposed to. And because I, like yourself, I tend to surround myself and everything on my social media contacts and the people that come to the gym are fairly healthy. So it's kind of easy to get misled into thinking that people sort of know what they're doing. And then one trip to the grocery store uh, just eradicates all that when you see what people are actually putting into their cart. And <laughs> there's yes, nothing but... You packaged goods. I'm like, what are you doing? It's crazy. So the first thing I, I, I tell people, I try not to overwhelm them. Yes. You know, like I'm a, I'm a big fan of like, you know, I've, I've talked about the paleo diet and all this stuff and I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I think it works, but you know, it's, it's kind of baby steps when you're, when you're trying to change things. I think that there's a lot of power in changing one habit at a time. And so, you know, maybe it's just, you know, removing one thing out of your diet that's poor for you, like trying to reduce the amount of vegetable oil that you get in your diet. And maybe that's the first step. Trying to remove a processed food out of your diet and replace it with something more nutritious. So in the beginning, it's like, don't overcomplicate things. You just want to eat whole foods as much as possible, or at least minimally processed foods as much as possible. Um, But I try not to be dogmatic about it. Right. Uh, it's one thing that actually led me, you know, as I said, I'm still a fan of the paleo diet, but it does drive me crazy when people get very dogmatic about it yes. or because they'll spend all their time trying to defend it and, and uh, you know, posting this research which supports it. And then if there's research that comes along which may contradict it, then they'll say, oh, these people are idiots. They don't know what they're doing. And I think that's actually a, a bad position to be in. You want to be a little bit open and you want to experiment with your own diet. So I'm constantly experimenting with my diet. You know, when I go to, um, I'm I'm lucky enough, one of the, I mean, you're in Spain. I I go to Greece every year and I enjoy it there. And and it's taught me a lot about kind of being a little more relaxed about um, uh, being dogmatic about diets. Because when I go to the Greek islands, man, they're not eating paleo. They're eating grains. they're They're eating legumes. They're, you know, but... These people are among the, they, they outlive everybody. They're living longer than anybody else on the planet. So who am I to come in and say, oh, your diet is not healthy? Right. So when I go to Greece, I eat like the Greeks do. I eat a traditional diet. Sure. Yeah, it may be that, it may be that the, the wheats are not, um, that's some of the, <clears throat> aren't GMO and, they're, and that they're better, some better things. They're but, not, but, they're but not eating a you. package whole wheat bread. They're not, you know, and the, 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 a lot of the stuff is, is, is sprouted or fermented. So it's not like the, the processed stuff that we get here. Sure. It's very, very different. So Sure, yeah. yeah, I'm with you. In Spain, there's a lot of, uh, there's a big divide now among what young people who are typically more influenced uh, by you know, by the advertising and uh, to or going more toward fast food, processed foods, et cetera. Um, but right. with uh, the economic problems in the last four or five years, people have been returning and spending more time with the grandmother. Uh, by, uh, right. And so you're seeing a little bit of, I'm seeing some of my friends saying, you know, wow, you know, it's not so bad eating, you know, those, uh, that uh, chickpea soup. Uh, and uh, lentil soup, you know, three, three times a week or something. Well, it's, it's all relative to what else could you be. It's a hell of a lot better than eating processed food. You know, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's certainly a step in the right direction. It's probably lots of good olive oil in there, which is full of antioxidants. So, you know, it's rich in fiber. So you can't really say that the, demonize the food because it sure. happens to be lentils. I don't, you know, some people are more sensitive to other things. I mean, I had to take all that stuff out of the diet to heal myself. Like I wasn't any, eating any grains 
and legumes, but that was for my particular case. So sure. again, I'm a I'm a big proponent of paleo because I think it works. I've rarely given it to anybody and had it backfire on them. But I'm just saying one should be willing to experiment a little bit and not right. be religious about things. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, that's a great point. You know, progress <laughs> uh, progress is more important than perfection. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, Wonderful. And if if I can uh, if I can just extend that um, because you made me think when I said Greece, there's an island there called Ikaria, and I go to Ikaria a lot, and I've probably been there I don't know ten eleven times, and I was lucky to be there twice last year, and those people Dan they they there are more people in their nineties, and I mean their late nineties that are very, very healthy individuals. They're not sitting around in rocking chairs and there's no old age home than anywhere else on the planet. And so it's a very interesting place to study longevity and to study um, what are the factors that cause them to lead long lives. And I think that's very important sort of for that baby boomer crowd and that 40, uh, you know, 40 year old plus crowd uh, to take some of those factors and, and see what they can incorporate into their own lives. Wow, that's fascinating stuff. Uh, speaking of Greece, I know that you have um, a uh, an upcoming active vacation trip to, that you I offer do. to people. I Why do. Why don't you tell it? That's uh, fascinating stuff. Um, tell us about that. It's, uh, you know, we actually went to Ikaria last year. Um, as I said, I was there a couple of times and, and I had a group to Ikaria. And so the website for these trips is travelsbynature.com. That's travels with an S. Um, and basically it's a group that we, you can come from anywhere. We, we meet in Greece. And it's not a retreat in such that you're staying in one particular location. It's a bit of a holiday. So we're going to travel around to a couple of places. But this is not tourist Greece. This is not the Greece that you thought, you know, if you're thinking of the little pretty white, blue and white houses in the Aegean Sea, that's not it because that's Disneyland Greece. Yes. We, are, we are doing the real Greece, which means the villages where the, where the real people live, right? Sure. And so in Ikaria, you know, the life is in the village, which is actually up on the mountains. And so we went there and we incorporated a bit of fitness every day. And you're not going to Greece to do burpees. So it's like, you know, it's, it's good fitness, but it's generally done in the morning before it gets too hot before breakfast. Sure. And then we're active during the day. So we do a lot of hiking because we're in rural areas too. We're in the mountains. So, um, uh, we hike quite a bit. Um, we, uh, I see you build yourself as the what is it the worst Spanish dancer or something like that. Yes. So we yes, have the we world's worst. So we do we do Greek dancing um, because I teach it here in Toronto. And uh, so another little known fact about Greg Carver. And uh, so we do some Greek dancing and we go to the festivals. And these are not commercial events. These are these are village organized festivals that are just a tourist would never experience anything like that. We look at um, the foods that they eat. Um, we had a cooking lesson using ingredients from the garden. You know, that's right there. I mean, it, talk about organic. It's just I mean, it's amazing stuff. Um, it, it, so it's trying to get a whole Greek experience and of the real Greece and at the same time um, see what health lessons that you can take and apply to your own lives. So wow, that's the trip. T typically they're about uh, oh, around 10 days long and as I said the next one is coming up uh, mid-July and it's going to be in the mountains of northern Greece in an area called Epirus which is not well traveled by tourists, has some of the most amazing scenery you'll ever see. Um, and these mountain villages, they're all made out of stone and they, you know, traditionally they've been quite isolated. And uh, so when you're there, it's like some magical experience. So I'm really looking forward to it. Well, wow. and, and what, and can you, and the dates can, the dates on that trip? Or? Yeah. So the next one is, uh, July 18th to the 28th. And the, uh, as I said, if travelsbynature.com is the website and that has the dates, it has the itinerary, it has the prices. And I partnered with a, a travel agency called Paragon Travel. So everything is kind of bundled in except your, your international air. But I mean, our, we have a bus and a driver access to, to get to, you know, if the festival is in another village, you need to get there, your accommodations, your meals, and we eat the traditional diet that's given to you. Um, so so it's a it's a whole encompassing experience. I tried to keep it um, 
affordable for everybody. This is not a big money maker for me. This is me sharing my passion, my knowledge of Greek culture. I mean, I speak enough of the language. I, you know, have taught the dances for quite a few years. Um, so it's just sharing my passion. Wow, that's that sounds very uh, very interesting. Um, here in Spain, my other what's my my other business is actually a uh, a luxury active and cultural travel business so we have some uh, commonalities no, I know there. there's some commonalities there yeah <laughs> very we much so talk. but I love I love <laughs> what you're doing with that in fact uh, that's uh, one of my one of my focuses uh, for this year is I want to to try to merge uh, and merge you know what we're doing with metabolic motivation and uh, yes. what we're doing with magical Spain and offer uh, Offers, you know, we, we do have some crossover, but I want to uh, to do a little more of that, and right. uh, so uh, so yeah, we should definitely stay in touch about that as well. I don't see a lot of people then that connect the, you know, there's a lot of retreats and you do yoga retreats and this and that and go to different countries, but there's very few people that connect it with the culture, with the local culture. And so that's what I'm trying to do is get a real cultural experience, immerse you with the locals as opposed to the plastic wrap tourist experience that most people get when they go to these countries. And uh, and then, as I said, what, what ancient health secrets can we uncover? What can these grandmothers teach us about uh, living a healthy lifestyle, you know. So when you go to Ikaria, you and you learn things. You learn, my God, their diet. Um, I mean, they eat a lot of wild greens. There's probably yes. like a hundred, a hundred varieties of wild greens that grow in the mountains, and they pick them. That means they're active, and the you know, or and the, the men are there, the and mobility. <laughs> That's right. Um, you know, they own goats. The goats have to be herded. That's like four or five hours of activity every single day, and it's a mountainous terrain. Um, some of those villages had no road access up until probably the 70s or 80s, so you walked everywhere. So that was a considerable amount of activity. And even the, I mean, the the very old people there today, they still walk. They don't drive cars. They walk everywhere because they're not in a rush. Yeah. They don't, they're not stressed about anything. The, they don't they're not going to look at their wristwatch. They don't have a smartphone. They're not trying to track every every activity they do on their jawbone or their Fitbit. They don't care. There was a woman there. She was an hour and a half late for her own wedding, and the priest hadn't even shown up yet because it's just not who. It's not urgent, right? right? So they're so relaxed. Oh, that's um, great. Sometimes, as as a Westerner, you know, it can be a little frustrating when you're trying to get business done or do anything there, and you know, like um. I have a friend of mine that she's she's been building a house there. It seems like for 15 years, and it's just it takes forever because the workers don't show up. Yeah. And the reason the workers don't show up is well, they say there was a a panieri, that means festival. Yes. Uh, you know, we couldn't come, or the day before, well, we had to prepare the lamb for the panieri, right? That I mean, that's a logical reason. Or there was a baptism, and to them, you you can't. This is their priority. They prioritize that over you know, working and slaving away. Um, and it helps build this real sense of community. Their, their community there is so strong, which is, I believe, another reason why they live so long. You know, you look at all these factors. It's not just diet. Um, it's a sense of belonging. It's sure. moving every day. It's spending time outside, not seeking comfort all the time. You know, I said it was the coldest day we've experienced here yet in Toronto, but it doesn't mean I can't go outside for 15 minutes. I should go outside for 15 minutes. You know, we can coon ourselves up too much. So these people spend a lot of time outdoors. They eat copious amounts of olive oil, um, amounts that I would think is ridiculous. You know, you order a, a village salad there and it seems to come with a cup of olive oil. But it's, it's whereas here, we're, we're putting it in little teaspoons. Little teeny, yes, tiny, or even, <laughs> even spray bottles. Yeah, I yeah, have, spray have bottles. Seen on occasion. Yeah, not exactly. in Spain, but in the states. <laughs> right. Yeah, in the states you see it. In Canada too. It's kind of sad. So you take all these factors together. You know, they 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 even drink a little wine every day. Sure. And the and the 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 um, old people will say, well, this is the reason why we live so long. Well, maybe not, but it it contains good co quantities of resveratrol, right? Um, lots of anti-inflammatories and antioxidants. And the wine isn't sprayed. They they don't export it to all these different places. It's from their own garden, right? Just like the vegetables, it's from their own garden. The olives are there. There's no mass slaughterhouse on the island. They, everyone is responsible for their own animals. So when they do eat meat, it's really the highest quality. So 
You know, the message is we can't all move to a Greek island, unfortunately. Um, you know, people deal with their lives and the stresses of their lives, and we have families, and we have corporate jobs, and nine to five, which sometimes seems to stretch into nine to nine because people are so overworked and overstressed. But I tell people, you know what, you don't have to be so black and white about it. Start small. That's why I say one habit at a time. Get outside 15 minutes. Disconnect. Don't even have a purpose when you go outside. Go for a walk. You don't even have to have a destination. Just go for a walk, an absolute purposeless walk. It's going to be good for your health. If you, don't have time to, if you don't have time to go to a gym and spend an hour and a half, don't. But get out of your seat and do 10 squats. There, you're doing something. Do 10 push ups I don't care what it is. Just move, right? Run. Climb a tree. Have fun. De-stress. These are really important messages because, and I, I see it especially, it frustrates me this time of year because it's New Year's and people get resolutions and they think it's, oh man, I'm going to go 100% and I'm going to do this insanity workout or this P90X or this something and I, because they equate, you know, utterly exhausting themselves and lying in a pool of sweat with getting fit and... That's not what the people in, in these little Greek islands are doing. No, they think you're crazy. Nor in Spanish just, villages or, or Italian no, villages either. No. Now, I'm not saying they don't have their problems. They have their issues too. Like, you know, they smoke more than they should and all that stuff. So I'm not painting an ideal picture. But there's little messages that we can take. It's not necessarily all or nothing. Right. And that's a, that's a great point. Some of the – one of there's a lot of that in our, I think, in Western culture that all of, all or nothing, or and that goes right into the more is better cognitive bias, you know, right. it fits, and it makes right. it easy to sell this whole, you know, the idea that uh, it's all, you know, if you need to get in shape, all you need to do, you know, as Einstein said, you should make everything as simple as possible, but not too simple, and that's that's what I think we've done, and uh, you know, with with the health and fitness industry in the past, and I'm happy to say we're coming out of it for pe you know people right. like you and I and and many thousands <clears throat> more. You know, we're telling people the truth, what actually works. But uh, right. there's so much, so much of that. Uh, you know, more is better, and that's like, for example, people thinking, you know, it's it's all about uh, exercising more and eating less, and you know, and that works for a few right. weeks, and then you start to get yes. the injuries, the inflammation, et cetera, and then right. people quit. Right. And, uh, they and the enjoy. older that the older that you get, the 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 smarter you have to train yourself too. Like I mean, as I said, I'm almost 56 years old. I need my recovery time. I'm not 20 years old anymore, right? I need to train smartly. As I, I prioritize mobility, I do body weight stuff. I do strength train. I'm actually starting a few gymnastics things now, which is incredible to me. Like, who starts gymnastics in their mid 50s? Um, and I'm not saying I'm good at it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do what I can. You know, you sure. see what progressions you get. I just try and, and incorporate all of the foundations of movement because, as you know, it's truly. It's about movement. It's not about muscles. It's about movement. So, you know, pulling movements, pushing movements, squatting movements hip hinging movements, so I'm thinking, you know, deadlifting, things like that, or even swinging a kettlebell, um, locomotion movements, so that could be walking, running, crawling, again, not losing contact with the floor, trying to combine all of those things. And, you know, if you only got a couple of minutes, you do a couple of minutes, you do what you can, it doesn't have to be black and white. By all means. Wow, this is, uh, Greg, this is wonderful, uh, wonderful messages for people out there, and I think we could, uh, I think... I feel like we've got a lot of synth a lot of synthony and uh we could go on for another hour but we're running up on time and uh okay. so we may have to do a part 2 in the future. And, oh, that'd be awesome. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, this would be great. Um so uh, We could delve deeply into one of these topics. Yes, yes, by all means. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking also want to mention to people you've got a beautiful website there at gregcarver.com and uh Thank you. I guess that's that's to be and you've got uh, some a wonderful free offer for some information to uh, right there on your home page. Uh, so as a final thought, Greg, what's one last thing, bit of wisdom that you've learned that you would, if you could talk to yourself 20 years, the Greg Carver from 1985, what would you say right. to Greg Carver from 1985? I would tell Greg Carver of 1985 to, to learn to be a little more comfortable with getting uncomfortable and to move, to not seek comfort all the time, but just to, to you know, get outside 
and move. It's so important for your health. It's so important for your longevity. It's a very simple message, but you know, we're here sitting glued to our computer screens and it's it's compelling to stay seated here and not get up and break the pattern and do stuff, but that's all you have to do. Don't obsess, just move. I love love the message and uh, love what you're doing. Congratulations again for for all your work and uh, thank you, man. And I really I would uh, suggest anyone in your area check out uh, gregcarver.com and uh, yeah. And if they're if they're in the Toronto area, they can uh, they can check out Strength Box. Uh, if you Google it, you'll find us. And uh, um, in terms of the trips to Greece, you can find it through gregcarver.com. But there's as I said, there's also that website travelsbynature.com. Travelsbynature.com. Wonderful. Correct. So and, that, and that's open to anyone in the world i suppose oh yeah absolutely absolutely yeah and no no real stringent fitness requirements as long as you're mobile you're good and you have a, a flexible attitude that's the most important thing um then that's what we're looking for wonderful fantastic uh greg it's been an honor and a pleasure and uh this will we will uh, we'll definitely stay in touch on this and uh cool. let you know when we get this up we've got kind of a backlog of uh, of interviews to get processed uh, so, uh, we'll, we'll let you know as soon as we get this up, it'll be on YouTube and then we're going to be launching on iTunes in February. Fantastic, man. I've had a ball. Hey, me too. Me too. I love what you're doing. And, uh, it's given me a, uh, a charge of motivation to get the, to get my fitness travel kind of, uh, union there bridged, you right. know, and, right. and get something, right. uh, get something out there. We've got a page, uh, on our travel site for paleo, a paleo trip. But uh, right. we've not really developed that or promoted that as of yet. Right. You know, right. One, one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Hey, thank you again. And uh, we'll be uh, stay in contact. And uh, look, who knows? We may see you in Greece sometime. Oh, well, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> All right, Wonderful. Dan. Thanks so much, Greg. Take care, man. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.